Okay, welcome to part three on JavaScript objects. Now, in the last two videos, we've explored the concept of an object. In this video, we're actually going to execute some code. Now, we're going to use the same orc object that we've been talking about, and we're going to create three properties. The first is we're going to make the orc's hair green, his age is going to be 26, and his stomach right now is full. So those are the three properties that we're dealing with. And we'll insert a function in a little bit. But first we want to write out one of these properties. So this is a rather simple procedure. So we'll do a document.write. And as we always have to do, we always specify the object name and then the property that we want to print out. In this case, we want to print out the age. So that's what we'll do now. And we'll run this in Chrome. And we get an age of 26. But properties in an object rarely stay the same. And in a program, you will be constantly changing some of the values of these properties. And so that's what we're going to do now. So one way we can do that is to create a new variable. So we're going to create a new variable called new age. And so we're going to reference the current property, which of course is 26. And again, we do that through object name and the property. And we're going to add two to that. So we should get 28. So we've got this new variable that we've defined to create a new age for our orc. And then down here, of course, now we just need to specify our new variable that's holding our new age. And so let's do that. And we'll run this. And we should get 28. And we do. So again, the point I want to make about objects is that, the, is that some of these values will constantly be changing depending on the circumstance. So again, that's one way you can change the value. Now, we don't have to create a new variable to alter the value. We can just alter the property itself directly by specifying orc.age and then setting it to 28. And again, that would directly update the property within the object. But a lot of times you actually will be creating new variables to hold particular values or to do different things. Now let's add a behavior to our orc. And what we want to add is eating. And you'll remember it's called a method once we're inside the object. So this is a method now, even though it really is a function. And we're just going to write out yum yum. So let's get rid of all of this. And whoops, I forgot the closing bracket for the function. There we go. And now you can see how those turn to red. Now to call the method, of course, we need the object name dot. And then we specify, of course, our function. And so let's go ahead and run this. And we should get this text yum yum. And we do. So now let's go ahead and work against our stomach full property that we set up here inside of our object. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some code in here. So we're going to set up a little if statement. So what we're going to do is first specify, the, of course, the object dot property in this case, which of course is stomach full. And we're saying if this is equal to true, then go ahead and execute our eat method. And remember, this is a logical operator. We're not setting this to true. So we're just saying if this condition is true, then go ahead and execute our eat method. So let's go ahead and do that. And we get yum yum, so the orc was able to eat. Now, what if we want to set this to false? What if this actually was false? And again, we can switch the value of the stomach full property. So again, we specify the object name dot property and just set it to false. And so now this isn't true. But we need to set up an else condition so that we can print out another statement because we know now that this condition will actually test out to be false. So let's put an else right below that. And now, since this condition will turn out to be false, it will go down to our else statement and it will do a document.write that the orc is not going to eat. So let's go ahead and run this. And we got the expected result, not eating. So you can see the whole point of this particular lesson is we can constantly change the values of the properties within our object. And so it is a dynamic object in every sense. Now, up to this point, we have been talking about custom objects, objects that we have created. But JavaScript provides numerous objects that we can already use that are already predefined for us. And so we can use those objects, methods, and properties. And so we're going to talk about that in the next video. See you guys then.